Iranian-Russian lash-up in support of Assad. Joe? Uh, Al yeah, Alex uh, Cassiano, let me bring you in here. Obviously, um, you, you know very well the nature of the old Soviet Union and the nature of KGB agents and uh, that horrid, bloody history. Um, what would you advise the president or the president's advisors on this front uh, the next time he's asked about Vladimir Putin so he doesn't c compare us to a regime that murdered 50 million of their own people? Well, I would point out that um, not that long ago when Vladimir Putin was saying that he was going to renew and rebuild Russia's nuclear arsenal, there was a Donald Trump who stood up and said, you want an arms race? You got one. Uh, we're not going to let Russia uh, become ascendant in nuclear weapons again. And uh, that worked for Ronald Reagan, and ultimately it broke uh, the old Soviet Union, and, uh, and it ended the Cold War. Um, that Donald Trump, I think, is coexist along with the same Donald Trump who is, frankly, to the left of John McCain and Lindsey Graham on intervention mm -hmm. and occupation. We have a president who, you know, on the one hand, he's criticized for uh, on Saturday Night Live for risking the world, uh, taking it to war. But on the other hand, the Donald Trump during the campaign was very clear that he thought America was overextended in the world. And I think he, he can find better ways to express that thought than to say, you know, Barack Obama killed a lot of people with drones. We're the moral equivalent of the Soviet Union. Yeah, I just, again, Nick, I, I have to ask, I mean, this is a man who can call Arnold Schwarzenegger a ratings loser. He can call Chuck Schumer a clown and a crybaby, but he can't say, no, I don't respect a leader who does A, B, and C. We have to have some sort of relationship in the future. That remains to be seen. But of course, I don't respect a leader who dot, dot, dot. Uh, there's something, well, there's a why with, here with that's Putin disturbing. Some of these things. It's possible he agrees with Putin on jailing journalists. I hope or not. possibly there's a relationship there uh, but, on but a, a business level. a question for the Admiral. I'm wondering, Admiral, uh, so NATO has been the bedrock of American foreign policy for a long time. Uh, can it survive a, a Trump presidency and will it survive a Trump presidency? It absolutely will, and that was what I wanted to add to the conversation. Something we can do to confront Putin is strengthen NATO. Here's an organization with three million men and women under arms, almost all of them volunteers, 28,000 combat aircraft, 800 ocean-going ships. We outspend Russia in defense 10 to 1, NATO to Russia. This is a very powerful organization. Instead of denigrating it, calling it obsolete, we ought to be building it. And I think that light will go on for the Trump administration. Even in my own conversation with Mr. Trump in Trump Tower mm -hmm. in December, he seemed to indicate that he did understand that part of NATO. Perhaps this whole name-calling of NATO obsolete is a negotiating position to get the Europeans to spend more on defense, which they should. But I think and I hope that light will go on, and I think NATO can be a big part of the solution here. Well, You know, Mika, I want to follow up on what Nick said if if Donald Trump keeps being asked to criticize Vladimir Putin for assassinating journalists yeah and Donald Trump refuses to criticize Vladimir Putin for assassinating journalists and said well we do it too in a sense mm -hmm. does that suggest that he thinks it's okay to assassinate journalists it, uh, look does I, that suggest he thinks it's okay to jail political opponents to assassinate mm -hmm. political opponents if you don't condemn after being repeatedly asked yeah. to condemn these actions at some point you go back to the he who does not deny admits right story and it suggests that he does i suggest somebody at the white house get him to write a a statement a very strong statement uh letting the world know that he condemns the assassination of journalists and political rivals because well, exactly. he suggests in the two interviews with o'reilly and us that he does not 
The options are fewer. Here are the explanations. By the way, check out the Wall Street Journal editorial board if you want to learn about um, poisoning uh, a political opponent uh, if you're in Russia. But the options are fewer. I mean, if there are some sort of business ties. That's where you would equivocate if you don't want to get caught, I guess, in some bad web. Uh, or, as you pointed out, Joe, he agrees with this. Or thirdly, he doesn't understand which are all bad options. There's Actually, all bad options. There's, there's no good option here. And there's literally no one in the U.S. government, no prominent person in academia who agrees with this. He is by himself on this position. And where's the negotiating tool that Admiral Stavridis was talking about? When you say NATO is obsolete, you might be able to trans that into some sort of, translate that into some sort of negotiating tool. I don't see what the negotiating power of I respect Putin is for Donald Trump. Yeah. Except for perhaps he's being held to it against his will. All right. What do Retired we have next Admiral week? James Tafridis, thank you very much. Morning Joe is coming right back. Thanks, everybody. Superior to Russia. What, what you have in this new president is someone who is willing to and is in fact engaging the world, including Russia. But America morally superior to Russia, yes or no? I believe that the ideals that America has stood for throughout our history.